Hi everyone, this is Nick Pollock here from Roar Lions Roar. While you're here, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that alert bell so you never miss any of our new content. And if you prefer to listen instead of watch, make sure you check us out on your podcast platform of choice where you can subscribe and download each new episode. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. Go State! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Roar Lions Roar. I'm your host tonight, Nick Pollock, and I am actually running solo for this one. So we are going to discuss the Penn State-Delaware game that just went down a couple of days ago. Um, we won't go too long here today since it is just me, and I don't like the sound of my own voice that much. Uh, but we will talk about some of the important things from the game, um, and then we will you know, get you out of here and get you ready for the rest of our podcast uh, material this week. Uh, first of all, if you are not already subscribed to the podcast, please make sure you do so on your podcast platform of choice. Also really helpful if you can leave um, a like and a five-star review for us, especially if you're on iTunes or Spotify. Really helpful. Really appreciate you for doing that. Um, and also, I realized on Spotify, there's actually, if you're on your phone, there's actually a place where you can enter Q&A questions on there. So I'll be sure to check that, but definitely use that if you have any questions you want us to discuss on the podcast. Um, also of note, today's episode is brought to you by Homefield Apparel, our longtime sponsors here at Roar Lions Roar. Um, you know Homefield Apparel makes the best collegiate apparel out there. Uh, shirts, sweatshirts, joggers, hats, all that good stuff. Um, you've, if you haven't seen the Penn State line, make sure you check it out. It's uh, about a 28-piece um, collection there. It's all fantastic stuff. We love wearing our home field stuff, and we love that they support us, and we're happy to support them. Um, and if it's your first time visiting Home Field Apparel, you can use the code RLR23 at checkout for 15% off of your first order, no matter how much stuff is in there. It's a great deal. Definitely take advantage of it. And make sure you check out all their stuff, not just Penn State related. You know, all the deep dives they do for the Penn State stuff, going back in yearbooks, all that stuff, they do that for every place that they make apparel for. So definitely worth your time. Once again, 15% off of your first order using the code RLR23 at checkout. Now, let's get into what was a thorough beatdown by the Penn State Nittany Lions defeating the Delaware Fightin' Blue Hens. Oh, side note, were they always the Fightin' Blue Hens? I know they've I know they've always been the Blue Hens. I didn't realize that they've always been the Fighting Blue Hens, though, so that, that might be news to me. Um, but they defeated Delaware by a final of 63-7. to It was Basically over from the very first drive, Penn State forced a three and out and then immediately got the ball and went on a long scoring drive that, you know, where everything was pretty much as easy as can be. Um, and, you know, this, like we said in the preview, this is expected. Like, this is what a top D1 FBS team is supposed to do to an FCS team, even if it's a good FCS team like Delaware. And Delaware is a good FCS team. They are, I would not at all be surprised to see them only pick up a couple more losses along the way this year. Um, but, you know, this is what's expected, especially when you're a team that um, seems to have pretty significant talent along both the offensive and defensive line, as Penn State does. And while I wouldn't say the offensive line was perfect in this one, um, they were rotating in backup, second stringers, third stringers pretty early on in this one. So I wouldn't read too much into any, you know, maybe plays where you saw a little more pressure than you would have liked. And also keep in mind, you know, a lot of what it seems like Penn State and Mike Yursich wants to do with the offense this year is moving the pocket and getting Drew Aller out in space uh, because he's so proficient at throwing on the run and so proficient at reading the defense when he's on the run. Um, it just adds an extra little element to everything. So when that is the case, you're often going to see what appears to be more pressure than normal because, you know, offensive linemen, you can't effectively block someone if your quarterback's rolling out of the pocket because if you hold on to that block, it's going to be holding. So I think that's going to be a common theme this year, no matter who they're playing. It's maybe going to sometimes seem like there is more pressure on Drew Aller than there actually is. So just keep that in mind when you're judging the offensive line a bit. Um, but let's get into what the offense did in this game. First, I just want to read the all the drives that Drew Aller was in the game for. 13 plays, 60 yards, touchdown. 9 plays, 37 yards, touchdown. 9 plays, 75 yards, touchdown. 5 plays, 16 yards, punt. 6 plays, 49 yards, touchdown. 10 plays, 74 yards, touchdown. That is exactly what you wanted to see from Penn State in this game. Would you have liked to see a few more huge plays? I mean, I guess, sure. I'm sure Franklin wouldn't have minded. But on the other hand, Delaware plays a 3-3-5 defense, which is essentially designed to say, we're not going to let you have big plays, but you can eat us up on the ground and over the middle with short pass and stuff. And that's exactly what they did. 
Drew Aller finished the day 22 of 26 for 204 yards with a touchdown. Also rushed the ball five times for 27 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Uh, when Bo Prabula came into the game, he was three of five for 22 yards through the air with a touchdown and rushed uh, eight times for 46 yards and his own rushing touchdown. I think the big takeaway for Drew Aller in this game, and we'll talk about Bo Prabula in a little bit, but the big takeaway for me for Aller is that this was a really great chance for him to show, and again, with the caveat, they don't, this is Delaware. They don't have the athletes on defense that uh, Penn State will see over the course of the rest of the season. But he showed that he has the ability to read a defense pretty effectively. The thing with the 3-3-5 defense, <clears throat> it is, yes, it is designed to cap big plays and force you to earn it over the middle. But you still have to do that. And with five defensive backs on the field, you know, sometimes it can be a bit tricky to make those reads and find where those soft zones are. And I think Geraller did it incredibly effectively. There's been several breakdowns already across, you know, the Penn State internet, on YouTube, podcasts, etc., showing different uh, occasions where he was able to go through his progressions and find the open man. But he did that extremely effectively. And he, you know, I just read off the drive chart. They marched down the field with very little resistance. Uh, so really good to see that from Drew. Not too much more to take away. I mean, you like to see the um, continued no turnover streak for him. That's great to see. Um, but honestly, the most the most important and impressive thing from him was just his ability to scan the field and find the open guy and to continue to make really impressive throws with, you know, very little stepping into it just has an incredible arm really is a remarkable asset for Penn State's offense and for offense coordinator Mike Yersich at running back Katron Allen drew the start in this one and I think that we might actually see that a bit more going forward um he's just such a physical runner if you can batter opposing teams with Katron Allen just a bit it makes it all the easier for Singleton to come in and you know re rip off some big gains uh, but we'll see what happens there but Katron Allen on the day 103 yards one touchdown 5.4 yards per carry he looked awesome you know he looked patient he looked powerful uh, he looked you know quicker at times than I thought he did last year but really impressive game for him Nick Singleton 47 yards on the ground only 3.9 yards per carry so a bit lower for him did have three touchdowns and while he wasn't as explosive again to be expected with the 3-3-5. You're not going to have those huge plays. But I will say the thing that I really liked from Nick Singleton in this game is that he looked really patient running the football. He really seemed to do a good job of trying to identify the holes, letting his blocking scheme set up. And even though it didn't lead to anything huge in this game, that's the type of running style that's going to lead to a massive play against, say, an Iowa a team that is not going to be running at 3-3-5. They're going to be much more up front in your face. And for a guy like Nick Singleton, if he can hold off his run long enough for the hole to open up that he needs and then hit top speed after that, there's not going to be nearly as much resistance behind that initial wave, and he's going to find a lot of big plays for himself. So maybe not the most impressive statistical day for Singleton, but still a really good performance overall even though I'm sure he's not terribly happy about the 3.9 yards per carry. Did also have a catch, I believe, for 18 yards, um, so that was good to see also. The receiving core continues to look solid. Uh, Keandre Lambert-Smith, six catches for 74 yards. Tyler Warren, six catches for 37 yards and a touchdown. Those two led the way. But once again, 10 different receivers caught passes for Penn State, which is excellent to see, um, including Malik Mega, Christian Driver, guys really far down the depth chart. Um, so really, you know, it's impressive the way that Drew Aller is able to spread the ball around. And we talked about in the preseason how they were likely going to lean on Keandre Lambert Smith as a true one. And he's, you know, he's backed that up so far. He's looked fantastic. But after that, we talked about how there was a really great opportunity for this to be a very spread out offense in the sense that a lot of guys had a chance to contribute. And I think Drew Aller is showing us that he doesn't, you know, he's not looking for a certain guy on any given play. He's just looking for someone who's open. That's the mark of a really good quarterback. If, when we continue to see the ball spread around like this, that shows that Drew Aller is, you know, he's not forcing the ball to anyone. And I don't think we, aside from maybe a couple occasions, I can't think of many times we have seen him force the ball. Um, so, you know, 
really impressive. Overall, I thought the offensive line looked uh, pretty good for the most part. Uh, like we said at the top, rotating backups in fairly early, so hard to glean too much from the performance. But overall, Allard, clean pocket. That's what you'd expect against Delaware. Um, and I would say we talked about in the preview how a couple of years ago when Penn State played Villanova, they weren't as dominant on the offensive line as we would have liked them to be against an FCS school. This looked more like what you would want to see from a top tier FBS school against an FCS school. This was much more in line with, you know, the discrepancy that should be clear in such a matchup. Flipping over to the defensive side of the ball for Penn State, they gave up the 66 yard touchdown. The biggest story with that is that it more just exposed some backups on the Penn State uh, defense. Um, and there was, I, I believe, at least you know five of the guys around the football that maybe had the chance to make that play. I know Kalen King was in at that point, but I'm pretty sure everybody else really within the vicinity was all backups. On the one hand, yeah, it's not great. Like You don't want your backups to give up a 66-yard run to an FCS school. But on the other hand, it's very seldom, very seldom will there be situations going forward this year, aside from blowouts, where you're going to see that many second stringers in at the same time. Yes, Penn State is going to continue to rotate. You have to do it, especially at linebacker. They ask, no, they ask their linebackers to be a lot for this defense. So you have to be able to give them breaks once in a while, too. But it's not often that you'll see, for example, Dom DeLuca and Tyler Elsden on the field at the same time. You know, it's going to be much more common. You'll see Tyler Elsden out there with Abdul Carter and Cur Curtis Jacobs, or you'll see Dom DeLuca out there with uh, Curtis Jacobs and Kobe King. So it's, you know, it's not great, but it, it hardly means much in the grand scheme. And remember, you know, a guy like Tyler Elsden still recovering from injury. A guy like Dom DeLuca still getting used to, you know, getting more defensive snaps. So overall, not great, but not a huge deal. Aside from that 66-yard run, the defense allowed just 74 more yards on the day entirely, and 46 of those yards came on one drive for Delaware late in the third quarter, and that was basically only backups in. So pretty much as clean of a performance you could possibly ask for from the Penn State defenders that matter most for the team this year. Uh, overall, really impressive. First half, four out of the six drives, not counting the final uh, kneel down that Delaware had to end the half. Four of them were three and outs. The other one was that 66-yard touchdown, and then the other one was a six-play drive for five total yards and a punt. That's pretty incredible. That's an awesome performance from the defense. Um, really not much to nitpick there. I will say I thought there were a few more yards that could have been had by the Delaware offense with some better throws, but a lot of those poor throws were also forced by you know the defensive line and the linebackers crashing and getting into the quarterback, quarterback Ryan O'Connor's face a bit sooner than he would have liked. So, yeah, I mean, most of those plays, you know, you're not going to get as lucky on those plays not being converted against better quarterbacks and better teams, but you also have to understand that, you know, those throws would have likely been better without as much pressure in the quarterback's face. So, yeah, there's, you know, they're not perfect. They're never going to be perfect. No de no college defense is ever going to be perfect, but still a really good performance. Uh, sacks on the day for Zane Durant, Jalen Reed, Zariah Fisher, and Jameel Lyons. Um, really cool to see, especially, I mean, awesome for all four of those guys, but especially very cool for Jameel Lyons, true freshman. He got a ton of hype in training camp uh, this fall. And he was, you know, singled out as somebody who had a chance to really make an impact and continue to work his way up the depth chart. And just really cool to see him get his chance in a game this week and get to make an impact with his first collegiate sack. Very cool. Finally, the Dom DeLuca pick six. One, should be acknowledged, really, really terrible decision by Delaware's quarterback. It was their backup in this, uh, Zach Marker, I believe his name is. Uh, really, really bad throw. Bad decision. Absolutely should not have thrown that ball in any capacity. But, you know, considering that Dom dropped the pick earlier in the game, which was a much more difficult play, I think, a much tougher read on his part, I think it's fair to say he earned it. Um, it was not, it has not been overall the great year for Dom Luca defensively so far. Um, you can just, you know, it's, it's pretty apparent when he's out there, the difference in uh, speed between him and 
Curtis Jacobs, Abdul Carter, Kobe King, even, you know, even guys like Tyler Elsden, some of the other backup linebackers, like Dom DeLuca, he's awesome. He was also a walk-on for a reason, right? Like he, he doesn't have that same natural uh, talent base level as those guys do. But what he does do is he will outwork pretty much anyone else around him. And that's how he's gotten to this point. He has, you know, he has earned a spot as a backup linebacker on this team. And even if he doesn't have that, you know, pure athletic base that the other guys do, he is showing, you know, that he understands what his role in the defense is supposed to be. He's going to have to continue to do that to put himself in the best positions because his lack of top end speed is going to bite him in some cases. So, you know, getting as good of reads and as good of first steps as he can is going to be really important. But overall, really cool to see him get a pick six. Awesome to see how the sideline just exploded. I mean, the second he got in the end zone, the entire defense was around him celebrating. Uh, you can just tell how beloved he is on the roster. Like, you know, he's wearing zero for a reason. He's a captain of this team. He, like, he's just somebody that if you, I'm, I'm sure if you asked every single kid on this team, you know, to name, name, you know, guys who stand out as leaders the most or their favorite other guys on the team. I'm sure Dom would be in the top three for pretty much everyone on the entire squad. Um, really cool moment for him. Hopefully he has a couple more big ones for Penn State this year. Special teams, uh, no field goal attempts on the day. Alex Falcons went eight for eight on his point after attempts. Sanders Hayek got in there and went one for one. The only weird thing to note here, uh, and um, Riley Thompson had a good game punting the ball as well. The only thing to note here with the kicking game that I was a little bit struck by was that Falcons did not kick the first eight. I it was I think he kicked maybe two more point afters after Sanders Haydack went in for his. So I thought it was a bit odd that they put Sander in for the one and then took him out for the next two. I don't know if they saw something on film they didn't like something about his uh, about his kick or I you know unclear. I haven't watched that part back yet, but you know something to watch i i think that everyone is in agreement that it's probably falcon's job at this point until he gives someone a reason to not send him out there but you would think that they would want to give sanders haydack as many opportunities to continue kicking as possible because you know falcons won't be back next year sanders haydack will and Sahedak still has a massive leg, and he's somebody you know, and he's on scholarship. Like he's somebody you'd like to take advantage of having at some point. So that was a bit odd, and I think it's going to be a good thing to watch their usage pretty closely going forward too. Overall, this game for Penn State domination the way we expected domination to happen. You know, they dominated the clock, forty-two minutes and twenty-two seconds of possession to seventeen thirty-eight Fetty Wap. Um, they only allowed 58 passing yards to Delaware. That's extremely impressive. Penn State was eight of 14 on third down, including third or not including, but also three of three on fourth down, much better performance. I believe they were sub 500 a week ago. So, uh, much better performance for them there. Uh, really good to see Amari Evans get into the game in this one. He's somebody that we had heard a lot about during the off season as well, that had a chance to, you know, really take a stranglehold on the third starting receiver job. Um, and then due to injury, it sounds like, uh, potentially we haven't seen him on the field much. He came in late in this game, caught a touchdown pass from Bo Perbula in this one. Just really good to see him out there. Still has a chance to be a really important feat piece for Penn State's offense this year, um, as a field stretching, um, you know, presence he has elite, elite speed. So definitely someone we want to see continue to get worked in there. Um, and then I think one of the other takeaways that some fans are going to have after this game is... Bo Prabula, he looked really, really impressive running the football in this one. And again, caveat, Delaware. But he also looked pretty good running against West Virginia, too. He is unbelievably shifty with the ball in his hands. You know, the common um, the common comparison, naturally, is Trace McSorley. You know, they're both wearing nine. But Bo's a little bit bigger. And while Trace was a smart and effective runner... Bo seems to be faster and quicker with his cuts in and out. Now, Grant, some of that is, you know, by the end, Trace had been through a lot. He wasn't, you know, quite as nimble on his feet uh, as he was early on. But I think one of the things that fans are probably wondering is, you know, is there a role for Bo Prabula as part of this starting offense? You know, maybe like in the way that we saw Tyler Warren running the Wildcat quarterback a couple of years ago, stuff like that. So, 
I I don't think there is right now. Like, you know, the idea of Bo going into a option look near the goal line with Singleton or Allen is, you know, uh, it's an attractive idea for sure. Like, he has proven that he is a very good runner of the football and he's really effective getting into the end zone. But I, I just don't know if there's necessarily a reason to take Drew Aller off the field in those situations just yet. If we continue to see Bo do this, you know, over and over again and just carve through, you know, the defenses that'll be continuing to improve as we get along the schedule here. If he, you know, if he's able to do that against Illinois and Iowa and some of the other teams, yeah, maybe you start considering, you know, using him on, you know, some short yarded situations or even just randomly popping him in there for like a just like the start of a drive, just to see if you can, you know, get eight free yards on the ground to start a drive. But I I think Drew Aller is playing too well to consider making the Bo Perbula package too prevalent right at the moment, but I think that could easily change. Uh, something to definitely watch going forward. So, once again, to recap, Penn State 63, Delaware 7. Just a really impressive performance by Penn State overall. Take out the the 166 yard run, and it looks even more remarkable, but um, it happened. It was worth noting. So, overall, as much as you could ask for for Penn State in week two against an inferior FCS team, and things are going to ramp up pretty quickly, although maybe not as quickly as we thought with Illinois. Illinois hasn't looked that great thus far, but we will discuss Illinois and the rest of the Big Ten this week um, because we're going to do a midweek podcast this week. Myself and Flip are going to get together and you know kind of take the pulse of the Big Ten as the Nittany Lions jump into their conference schedule starting this week with Illinois. So we're just going to take a quick look around the conference, see what everyone's been doing, um, how it may affect Penn State going forward. Um, And because we're doing that midweek podcast that will release on Wednesday, that means our preview for Illinois this week will actually be out on Friday instead of Thursday, just to give a little gap between the two. So if you are looking for the preview on Thursday, please note it'll actually come out on Friday this week. And if you, you know, for some reason don't like that, please be sure to leave us some feedback and we can, you know, consider, you know, bundling our schedule around a little bit differently. Um, So once again, Thanks, everyone, for listening. If you're not subscribed to the podcast already, please make sure you do so. Five-star review, really helpful. Make sure you check out homefieldapparel.com. Use that code RLR23 for 15% off of your first order. But overall, thanks for listening. I know this was maybe not as quite as exciting with me as a solo voice here, but hopefully you still got all that good uh, lowdown from the Penn State thorough domination that you needed in this one. So for myself, Nick Pollock, for my co-hosts who are somewhere listening to this probably, hopefully, maybe they don't like the sound of my voice as much as I do, um, which is not that much again, to be clear. But thank you everyone for listening tonight. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Go State.